All right, in this last video uh, for this unit, we're going to talk about uh, protein synthesis. All right, so there are a couple of terms that we need to know. One of the uh, terms that we need to know is replication. Another term that we need to know is transcription. And the an, a last term that we need to know is translation. Now, protein synthesis occurs during um, interface. That's in this part of the cell cycle when the cell's growing, and then also in uh, gap two when when we're in interphase and the cell's functioning. This cell, the DNA, has to provide information that regulate the cell's activities. Now, <clears throat> to do this, we need to understand these three terms. Now, I've got good news for you. I've got a couple of tricks that I have explained to, my, to all of you students that will help you hopefully remember which process is involved in which step. And that is you take these three words and you just put them in alphabetical order. Okay? R comes before T, and T, uh, SC comes before SL. So we're going to put them in alphabetical order. This is the first step, this is the second step, and here's the third step. Okay? Now, next, we're dealing with our nucleic acids. And nucleic acids are going to be DNA, mRNA, and tRNA. And if we take those and we also write those in alphabetical order, we'll have them like this. Now, the T and the M are lit, written in lowercase. The RNA is written in capital. The lowercase is because this describes, and this describes, the type of RNA. This is a transfer RNA, and this is a messenger RNA. We'll come back to messenger in just a minute. All right? Now, we need to know, how do we get this? Well, look at it. We put them in alphabetical order again. And these are in alphabetical order. Each one of these comes from the one above it, except for the first one. We'll come back to that in a minute. What's above tRNA? mRNA. So tRNA comes from mRNA. And mRNA comes from DNA. And DNA is a replica. Replica means exactly the same. So DNA comes from DNA. Okay? And that's your your tricks for remembering which one is which. Alphabetical order, alphabetical order, came from the one before it, and then came from itself because it's a replica. Now, <clears throat> DNA has the letters A, T, C, and G in it. And these are called nucleotides. RNA does not have T. RNA has U, okay? The A stands for adenine, the T stands for thiamine, the C stands for cytosine, or cyto cytosine, yeah, and the G stands for guanine, okay? Now, A is, if we look at these three letters, or excuse me, four letters, these four letters, if I asked you to pick two of these letters to make a word, you would choose AT. Remember that A always pairs with T when you're going from DNA to DNA. C, there's another letter in the alphabet that looks a lot like C, except it's got a little tooth on it, and that's G. So remember, G always pairs with C. So when we go from DNA to DNA, A pairs with T, T pairs with A, C pairs with G, and G pairs with C. But RNA doesn't have thiamine in it. So A is going to pair up with the A and the DNA, you're going to pair up with the U, called uracil. And T pairs with A, and the T in the DNA pairs with an A in RNA. The C still pairs with a G, and the G still pairs with a C. Now let's take these four letters. U, A, G, C. When going from RNA to RNA, mRNA to tRNA, U pairs with A, A pairs with U, G pairs with C, 
and C paired with G. Okay? Now, <clears throat> why are these words called the words what they are? Replica means an exact copy. So let's say we have a DNA strand and it unzips. See, normally the DNA is like this. So let's say we have an A over here, we're going to have a T on that side. If I have a C over here, we have a G on that side. If I have a G over here, we're going to have a C over there. And then if I have a T here, we're going to have an A over there. But we're going to go, remember when in the S stage, right here, in the S stage we had to copy that chromatid and make it into a chromosome. Well, that this side here is the same as that side. All right, how do we do that? Well, we're going to take this DNA strand right here, this alpha double helix is what it's called. Alpha, um, the letter alpha has a twist in it. And it's a double helix because it's like a twisted ladder. Okay. Now that alpha double helix or twisted ladder of DNA, it can uncoil. And so let's say it uncoils. All right. And we're going to make a copy now of a second strand. When we get done with this, we will end up with, if it goes all the way through, we're going to end up, because this is a ladder, twisted ladder, it uncoiled and allows us to copy this and make two ladders. So we started off like this, and we're going to end up like that. We're going to make a chromatid into a chromosome by making one strand into two strands. All right? And so we go through this process. If I had an A here, I have a T there. But if I had an A here, I also had a T over on that original strand that paired with it. Okay? So there's the original strands. If that's a T, this is an A. And notice, same code, replica, AT, AT. So that's how we get a replica. If I had a C here, I had a G there. And if I had a C here, I have a G here. And if I have a G there, I have a C there. So it's AC, AC, TG, TG. So it's exactly the same, replica. That's how we make uh, an extra copy of our DNA during the S stage of interface. Now, next... So how does this provide information to the cell? Well, remember that the DNA is in the nucleus, the long strands of DNA. It has to tell all these parts of the cell what to do. And to do that, since DNA is so important, it's not going to leave the nucleus. Think about it. It's kind of like the president of the United States. He's running the country. He's, you don't want that president to get uh, accidentally injured by somebody or maliciously injured by somebody. We have to protect the president. That's part that's very important. And it's this is going to control the, all the activities. So how are we going to send the message out? Well, we're going to use a messenger. The mRNA is going to leave because the mRNA is more easily replaced. So we're going to produce a messenger that's going to leave. Now, DNA looks like a double helix, a twisted ladder. That may not show up too well, so let me draw that here. DNA looks like a twisted ladder. Okay, but mRNA is a single strand. Okay, it's not a twisted ladder. And mRNA is also shorter. It's not as long. DNA, if this was the actual size of the thickness, it would be running out to the parking lot. It's really long. All right, mRNA is not very long. mRNA could be um, a couple of hundred nucleotides. This may be a thousand, so, or a couple, many thousand. Okay, and then we have... Uh, we have to copy that. So the DNA is going to uncoil. So let's take this section and uncoil a section of it. But we're not going to make another strand of RNA. In this case, excuse me, we're not going to make another strand of DNA. In this case, we're going to get, it's going to just uncoil in a piece. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a strand a single strand of mRNA that's going to leave that nucleus and come out and tell that cell what to do. Well, to do that, if I had an A here, there would be a T on the DNA. But on the mRNA that we're going to make, and after this is made, it jumps out and it closes back up. So the mRNA is going to jump out over here. That A would pair with a U. And this, if we had a, a, G, a C, well, a C pairs with a G. And if we had, a let's say, a, a, a G here, well... Uh, the DNA would be G, and the G goes with a C, 
And that's what you would see on the DNA. But here, on the mRNA, we're going to go with a C. So some of the letters are the same, but some of the letters are different. Notice, no T in mRNA. Okay, and this is going to make the messenger. Now this messenger is then going to move down here. So we have a little messenger with the letters on it. Let's say U, G, C. That code of U, G, C, let me draw this on the other side. is going to then match with a tRNA. And that tRNA is going to have three spots on it for three uh, nucleotides as well. And U pairs with A. And G pairs with C. And C pairs with G. So the, the and this is called a codon. The, the messenger is the codon, the code on the mRNA. And then the tRNA is called the anti-codon. All right, why is it called the anti-codon? Because it's the opposite of the codon. Okay. Now, on the other side of the tRNA, we have what's called an amino acid. Amino acid. This amino acid is going to be connected with the next amino acid. And that's going to be connected to the next amino acid. Now let's not draw a tRNA here. Because there's something that slides down this mRNA. And it's called a ribosome. We have this ribosome. And it's going to slide down the mRNA. We have a long strand of mRNA here. Not super long. It's not as long as DNA. But it's a uh, longer than the tRNA, okay? So this ribosome is going to slide down, and as it slides down, the ribosome can hold two tRNAs. So then when it moves down, the next tRNA will come in, and that will connect these amino acids. They will bond together. And when these bond together, that one's going to be gone. But the amino acid will be connected kind of like you're connecting paper clips. You can only hold two, you connect these two, then you let go of that one, and you slide down and hold the next two, and the first one is still connected. And then when you connect those two, you slide down and you hold the next two, and the other ones are still connected because they're connecting as you go, even though the tRNAs are, moving, are disappearing, the amino acids will stay connected. And this creates what's called a protein chain, or a, an amino acid chain, or a polypeptide, which makes the protein. Okay? And that's where translation comes from. We have converted from a nucleic acid to an amino acid. We have changed the language. We've translated it from one type of acid to another acid. All right? And there's a handout that I gave you in class that provides a lot more detail on this. Now, one other thing that you should know about this although it's not on your test that we have tomorrow, it will be on another test in the future, and that is about the direction of DNA production. Okay, one of these strands has what's called a five prime end, and the other strand has a three prime end. Let's see, let's go. So that's going to be 3 prime. So here, this is the same strand, okay? Let's just draw it bigger, not because it's bigger, but because we want to be able to visualize the same side. Notice, there's a 3 prime and a 5 prime. We have a 5 and a 3, a 5, a five and a 3. A 5 and a 3 on the same one, and a 5, a five and a 3 on the same one. When this uh, DNA is going to be synthesized, the DNA is always going to be synthesized in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. It's red from small to high, but produced from high to low. So we're going to read it from 3 to 5. So we're going to read going this direction, but we're going to synthesize the new strand going this direction as we read it. So DNA synthesis occurs 
If we're talking about synthesis, it occurs in the five prime to three prime direction. So it can go like that continuously because we're reading three to five. But on this side, notice the three prime down is down here. So we actually have to synthesize going that direction because we're reading it in the three prime to five prime direction. So we're reading backwards over here. So that means we're going to synthesize this section uh, and then we're going to synthesize this section and then we're going to synthesize this section. And when we get far enough, these connect, these sections will connect. Okay, and that's the uh, part of the DNA synthesis. And when we get done, it'll be twisted up. So we started off with a single ladder like that, and it mo moves this direction. And then when we get done, we have two ladders. And they're connected by the centromere. Okay? And that's what we end up with. And of course, these are ladders. An alpha double helix in the DNA strand. And here, this is like chromatin. Let me explain what chromatin is. Chromatin is long and thin. It's when the DNA is in the, in the interface. So if we were to look at the cell, and here's the nucleus, the DNA is long and thin, like spaghetti noodles there. When we're drawing a chromosome, they're not like this. They're going back and forth, coiled up a lot. So it's like a squiggly line going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And this process just keeps going back. I mean, it's really twisted up. And maybe your chromosome would look something like that. Instead of being real long, like from here down to the 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 gymnasium, instead of being real long and, and straight like that, it's going to be twisted up so much that it just looks like a big mess. That would be a chromatid, okay? And then we draw the other side going back and forth. And I need to be scribbling back and forth as I go like this because it's a twisted ladder going back and forth. But that's going to take too long, so I'm just going to do that. And then there's the other chromatid. And together you have the homologous, or excuse me, not the homologous chromosome. You have the sister chromatids. Each one's identical to the other. Okay, because if I had a T here, I have an A there, and I, if I have a T here, I also have an A there, and if I have an A there, I have a T here. So what we end up with is T A, T A. Both sides are the same all the way through, and that's your DNA synthesis. So I hope these videos helped you prepare for not only any exams that you have coming up immediately, but also hopefully helped you prepare for your semester exam as well, which is next week.